Welcome back guys to your make your Android application tutorials. We were discussing about the multiple screen support. So let's not waste time and quickly jump onto the Eclipse and continue our discussion. Now in the Eclipse earlier we had created our front page.xml and we are now about to add our graphics to our application. So we are going to copy and paste our background images in those dimensions and paste those images into the respective drawable folders. Now here inside the resource folder I have created a default drawable folder. So in order to create a new folder you just have to right click, go to new and select this new folder and type the name as drawable. Right? Now let me copy and paste all those images in the respective drawable folders one by one. This image is of SDPI and paste it inside the HDPI. Now similarly as I pasted this HDPI image into the drawable HDPI folder in similar way you have to paste the respective dimensions in the respective drawable folders. Now guys you can see here I have successfully copied and pasted all my background images and I have named this background images as LG. So make sure all these images have a respective dimensions and it is not necessary that it should be similar to the ideal dimensions that we discussed in the previous two tutorial. It may be little bit smaller or little bit larger. Little difference is not going to harm your application. At the right hand side of the screen I have shown you what dimensions I have taken and what is the ideal dimensions. So if your dimensions do not match with the ideal dimensions then please don't worry about it. It is not going to crash your application. Now go to the front page.xml. Now here inside the relative layout add an attribute. Background then give the address, add the redrawable, then give the image name. Right, our image name is LG, so I am writing LG. Now if you are running this application in HDPI device or MDPI device, then the Android operating system itself draw the image from the respective drawable folders. You don't have to specify from which folder you have to draw this LG image or light background image. Now let's check our graphical layout. It's looking cool. Now let's do one thing, change the background of our button. Now let's do one thing, let's copy and paste a image of the button, background image of the button inside the drawable folder. Now this is actually our image that we are going to place it at the background of our button. So let's copy and paste this image in our Eclipse. Now guys I have placed this image inside our drawable folder. This is because I have not defined the specific dimensions for each HDPI, LDPI and MDPI folders. I have straight away put this image inside the drawable folder. So if you run your application in any of the Android device then by default if that image is not available inside these folders then it is going to draw the image from inside the default drawable folder. Right? Now let's do one thing. Go to the coding part and add background at the redrawable slash button background default. So here is our attribute. Now let's check out our graphical layout. Here our text is dark and the background is also dark. So let us change the color of the text. Now let us write text color. Now let us specify the RGB value of our white color. It is FF, 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 RGB, right? Now our text will be white. Pretty awesome. Now let's do one thing. Copy and paste these two attributes in the rest of the buttons also. Now just press Ctrl Shift F to format the codes so as to align them in order. Right. Let's check out our graphical layout. It is looking pretty cool. Now this is actually presently our app icon. So let us change this icon to our own icon that we want. Fine. Now let's do one thing. Let's copy and paste all the ideal pixel values, all the icon dimensions that we discussed in the previous two tutorials and place it inside our HDPI, LDPI and the respective folders. Now at the right hand side of the screen you can see the icon that we are going to deploy in our HDPI, LDPI folder is shown at the right hand side and I have already copied and pasted those images in the PNG format inside our HDPI. LDPI, MDPI, XSDPI and double XSDPI. I have named that Android underscore icon. Now let's do one thing. Go to the Android manifest. 
Now there inside the application tab, you can find an icon option here. It is showing at the red drawable slash IC launcher. This IC launcher is the default launcher image that is stored here. And this IC launcher PNG looks like this. So we have to change this image to our custom Android icon dot PNG. So for that, go to the manifest file under the application tab in the icon option. Just hit on browse. Now here just type Android. Here we get our Android icon under the project resources. Just hit OK. Just save your manifest file and go to the front page.xml. Here you can see our launcher icon has changed to our own custom launcher icon. Now let us do one thing. Just delete all these iclauncher.png because it is unnecessarily taking our space. So let's delete it because we don't need it. Now let us save our application and run it. Now our app is running and it is looking quite similar to what we created in our Eclipse IDE. Right, we have changed our launcher icon and the buttons and the background are looking quite similar as we made our layout for the Nexus One 3.7 in screen. Right, now let me show you one thing. Let's go back, go to the menu. Here you can see our application is having the same custom launcher icon that we decided Android underscore icon. So it is looking more pretty awesome. Don't get confused by looking at the right hand side here. This was the test application that I was testing. Now let's go to our application. Now in our application when we click on this button and this button or any of the other button it is not changing its color. Now if you see if you see the application that I made in that application. Now when I click on this button, it is actually changing its color. So we have to make our application look more and more attractive. So when the user will click on this button, it is actually going to change its color and open the page of the simple question. So in the next video, I am going to talk about how you can change the state of a button when user press it or hover over it. So meanwhile, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys in next tutorial. So stay tuned and don't forget to comment, like and share our video. This is Shrek from Smart Heart signing off and have a good day. Thank you.